Guardians of the Ancient Expansion is finally here, and we've been given three new amazing champions, which I'm really sure are going to shake up the meta in a much needed way. We've been bought Zillion, Malphi, and most recently Aurelia, who bring in a new and interesting playstyle to the game. This video looks at the best new decks containing each of these champions that you can try out on day one of the expansion. This is Best New Decks, patch 2.7. This video has been done in collaboration with Bomber TV. Please remember to like and subscribe and turn on the bell notifications too. So let's dive in. This is Zillion Go Hard and it features 50 50 mix of Shadow Isles and Shrima cards, as a lot of low costing cards with 27 in total costing 2 or less mana. It's extremely spell heavy with 25 spells and only 6 followers. It's a medium budget deck with 3 epic cards. This deck tries to play as many go hards as possible, as early as possible, so you can cast a really, really early pack your bags to crush your opponent's hopes and dreams of aggro and mid range strategies. But if you're new to the game, go hard drains one from a unit and creates two copies of this go hard card in your deck. And when you've casted a spell three times, the spell turns into a one time use spell called Pack Your Bags that deals five to all enemies and the opposing nexus. Zillion Go Hard also has a lot of healing cards uh, to counter any burn that you may be facing. Lots of popular meta decks right now have burn in them and I'm sure lots of will in the future. So cards like Withering Whale or Drain cards like Doom Beast will be able to help you here. Withering Whale deals 1 to all enemies and heals your nexus for free and Doom Beast drains 2 from the opposing nexus when summoned on Nightfall. Draining accomplishes two things in this deck, or in general. Countering aggro strategies thanks to the heal, but also crushes your opponent's control thanks to burn damage it does too. So Go Hard obviously drains one when cast, which you're going to be doing a lot in this deck. And even cards like Renacious Path has the effect that it can drain up to two if you've stayed a unit this round. So you're going to keep your nexus healthy whilst damaging your opponent. Zillion and a Predict Package helps you a lot as well by getting multiple copies of Go Hard, especially if you've shuffled all the other copies into your deck. Leveled up, Zillion creates a fleeting version of cards you played last round at the start of the round. So it basically means at the start of each round, if you created Go Hard in the previous round, you're going to get another one come back. And this is going to mean you're going to create Go Hard so easily that will eventually turn into Pack Your Bags. And this in itself, I think, is a win condition. Cards like Ancient Preparations and Aspiring Chronomancer help you predict copies of Go Hard to help you find them as well. So this deck is super frustrating to play against as your opponent's really going to think they've got control and then boom, pack your bags comes. And it really shows off Zillion in a positive way as well, in a perfect like Time Lord sense, collecting all these cards from absolutely nowhere. This is Malphite Talia and features cards primarily from Sharima, but with lots of support from Targon as well, including the new champion Malphite and all his support. It's a lot of cards that cost 2 mana, which is in line with most Magro decks, uh, and it also contains a lot of extensive cards which cost a lot of mana, so you really kind of got the full range of the spectrum here, meaning it's a, a bit of an aggro hybrid deck I would say. It's medium cost level to build with only 3 epic cards. This deck tends to play a bit like a Nightfall aggro deck with a heavy focus on landmarks. This means that it sacrifices a bit of tempo in the early game to gain a very explosive middle game. In the first few rounds, you tend to just develop a few landmarks, including Ancient Preparations on turn 1, and a new Rockfall Path on turn 2, for example. In middle game, you want to start summoning strong cards like Talia or the Stonebreaker. Talia has the effect to duplicate an exact copy of a landmark you've already summoned, and the Stonebreaker has the effect that once you've summoned 4 plus landmarks, you deal 4 to the enemy and 2 to the opposing nexus. In the late game, you can close the game nicely thanks to Malphite alone. When he levels up and you have an attack token, he creates an unstoppable force in the hand which stuns all opponent's enemies. A brutal combo. If you're having problems leveling up Malphite, it's basically only doable thanks to Talia's ability of obviously being able to copy an expensive landmark in theory. The Eye of Rahorak is perfect as it summons 10 mana's worth of landmarks, which basically levels up Malphite on the spot, not mentioning the fact it's also a very good tool to stabilise the mid game and kind of transpose late, safely into that late game stage they're obviously going to be winning with this deck. The best curve would be something like this. Turn 1 Ancient Preparations, into turn 2 Rock Hopper or Blue Sentinel, Turn 4, Salt Spire. Turn 5, Talia, copying the Salt Spire and flipping Talia, or leveling up even. Turn 6, Stonebreaker. And then finally, turn 7, Malphite already leveled up. 
This curve looks very explosive around turn 5 or 6 and can totally crush aggro decks and mid-range decks with a Malphite. It has the same problems as aggro decks in the early game, but in the late game you're going to be controlling the board like there's no tomorrow. This is Aurelia Azir and it features cards mostly from Iona with some good amount of streamer cards too. It's a fairly standard mix of followers and spells, and like many aggro decks, most cards have low mana cost, with all but 5 costing 3 or less mana. It's a medium budget deck with 3 epic cards needed. This deck is super aggressive. The main idea is to summon lots of units, go wide meaning lots of units on the board basically, and attack as many times as possible. Azir and Empress DS have the effect to summon a sand soldier on attack, so if you have both cards on the field you're going to get two sand soldiers with every attack you do, absolutely insane value. There's been a new keyword added to the game, Blade Stance. Blade Stance starts a free attack with that many summoned blades, and it's basically like a separate attack phase like scouts. Uh, you're going to be summoning, say, three blades, and they're going to be 1-1 one, one units just with these blades on the attack. Um, lots of units cards revolve around this effect, including Ribbon Dancer and Xenia Steel Crescendo. The Sand Soldiers from Azir and Empress Diaz effect will also be summoned on these Blade Dance attacks, meaning you're going to get a very wide board with lots of pressure. Cards like Sparring Student and Green Grey Duo both have effects that gain power when other units are summoned, meaning you can quickly build them up into threats each round with obviously all the blades that are being summoned, all the Sand Soldiers, and meaning you can have a really wide board with big power units too. You also have lots of protection for your allies and champions, for example Nopify and Syncopation. Nopify stops a fast or slow spell that costs 3 or less mana, and Syncopation swaps two allies, meaning you can basically swap key units out of danger. Syncopation is also a great card to make a unit with lots of power unblockable, since you can attack with an elusive, which is obviously going to be hard to block, and after they declare the attack, blockers you can swap the unblocked elusive with say a buffed Azir for example, and go for the lethal, obviously Azir's leveled up card gains damage every time a unit is summoned, so you swap this in, say he's got 8 power, the opponent's nexus, open for attack, and this can be a nice little win condition. And there we go guys, I hope this video has given you a glimpse into some of the decks that you could play on day one of the new Guardians of the Ancient Expansion. I'm certainly going to be trying out all three of these decks, and I really think there's some really good interesting playstyles here, putting the new cards really at the forefront of all the combos. Who is your new favourite champion? I would love to hear in the comments. Up next is ranking the new Guardian of the Ancient Champions, looking at which is the new best champion and which is the worst one. I hope to see you there. The data presented here is analysed by Bomber TV using MOBA Analytics. He's a Master Tier player with a background in game theory and game design. He took the most winning art types into Master Tier, excluding ones with small play rates, analysed their key properties on why they are so strong. Link to his channel is in a pinned comment and in the card above. I've recently set up an Instagram account, at Law Guides, and I'll be doing a giveaway shortly. Please follow this account for see posts about new videos and for being a chance of winning this giveaway. Please remember to like and subscribe and turn on bell notifications too. See you next time guys.